like she promised to give millions of viewers whatever you want. If that were true, Gabby, you'd walk like a crab. <laughs> While ITV asks who wants to be a millionaire, the Beeb palm contestants off with a checkbook and pen. My advice, folks, is turn off and have a blank. Or a blankety blank if you're feeling frisky. <laughs> He's wank. I'm being very clever there. So, <laughs> what are Dyke's great programme ideas? Well, he's unveiled the Beeb's two biggest rating pullers. Charlie Dimmock's taken her T-shirt off. <laughs> Moving on. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna liven up Sunday nights with a porn version of Last of the Summer Wine. It's called Wanking with Dinosaurs. <laughs> and Red Alert is gonna be replaced with something more watchable. It's a show called When Paint Dries. <laughs> but we even hear that the BBC are hitting back at us with their own show called The Twelve O'Clock Show, where presenter Jeremy Spake aims a filthy terrain of so-called gags at minorities like posh birds and lanky wankers. It's not as easy as it sounds. You big cock. <laughs> How do I do it every time? I don't know. Pure genius. But enough B-related banter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the girl who sends out all the right signals, Miss Daisy Donovan. <laughs> Nice one. Now, I've got excellent news for lonely single women and witches, Ian. Now you can get designer milk specially for cats. I gave mine a bottle. Next thing I knew, she was shagging bag puss and posing for pet house and fur pants. But what's <laughs> next? Designer cat flaps? Mind you, I hear you. <laughs> I didn't even say that you can get those if you know the right plastic surgeon. Daisy, you're being filthy. You're upsetting the audience. Tell us what's on tonight's sorry, show. I'm sorry, I will do. Beverly Hills boy Jason Priestley reports from the Dome. Page 3 legend Sam Fox joins us live. And as for Ian... I'll be finding out why the French are perhaps as popular as a guff in an astronaut suit. <laughs> now it's time for the headlines. <laughs> BBC Director General Greg Dyke has threatened to remove dead wood. There are often two people doing the same job, he said. A spokesman added, there are often two people doing the same job. <laughs> A new report suggests that hands-free mobile phones can triple radiation to the brain. One user said, my future's not bright, my brain is orange. <laughs> As the latest Russian space mission blasted off today, scientists reveal the cosmonauts are equipped with the very latest in in-flight entertainment. <laughs> it's a troll on a string. A Scottish grandmother has been arrested for smuggling drugs. The police were suspicious because of the large number of local youngsters knocking at her door and volunteering to sniff her crack. <laughs> a United Nations committee has called for an end to poaching tigers. A spokesman said they're much better stir-fried with a little bit of ginger and garlic, aren't they? <laughs> Muslims are now using the internet to organise arranged marriages. A new site has been set up called Reader's Eyes. With the internet spreading across all cultures, we thought the time was right to look back at the history of the World Wide Web. How did it all begin? Early computers were made of wood, and instead of storing information, they stored clothes and shoes and were called wardrobes. It wasn't until ten years later that this man hit on the idea of filling them with electricity and calling them computers. <laughs> Having mastered all 99 levels of Frogger, Computer Boffin's next step is to link all the world's computers together. But as well as bringing good things, the internet brings dangers. Extreme specialist pornography, <laughs> the spectre of robot domination and the infuriating rise of the cyber tosser. <laughs> and that was all you ever needed to know about the World Wide Web. Yes, Daisy, what now? Do you think it's right that Pierre-Yves Gerbeau redesigned the dome after getting advice from his kids? No, I don't, Daisy. The only thing French kids know about are flick knives, rat's tail haircuts and getting rabies from a dead fox. <laughs> Good point, Ian. But could our English kiddies do any better? We sent Jason Priestley, fresh from being sentenced to five days in jail for drink-driving offences, to find out. When the new boss arrived from Euro Disney, the first thing he did was take his three-year-old daughter around the dome to tell him what to do with it. Brilliant. I figured if one kid can make a difference, just think what a whole gang can do. Do you guys see where they went? I... shit. <laughs> We're gonna go to the Living Island, which 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 is kind of like a, a British seaside resort. It's 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 kind of like Skegness, from what I understand. Yeah. But you guys go play on the sewage pipe. Go play on the sewage pipe. They love the sewage pipe. That's fun. <laughs> Look at that. This is what's flushed down the toilet uh, every year at at the seaside resorts. 
Two billion. Tampons. You got that right. <laughs> Over at the Play Center. You, you guys, the Millennium Dome is supposed to be about learning and knowledge and, and, and finding things out that you didn't know. And all you guys want to do is play video games? Yeah. Really? Let's play some driving games. Driving games. Everyone's a comedian. All right, guys, here we go. Let's go inside, okay? All right, here we go. We'll go in and play some games. So, dude, do you think this game's as good as Street Fighter? No. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, this is going to be really exciting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're really looking forward to this. All right, so, guys, this is something really exciting, right? This is something you wouldn't see in your house. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a bed. It's, it's a, it's a weird bed. So, what did you guys think of shared ground? Was that, was that fun? I didn't get the tilt bit. Right. I, didn't, I didn't like it. You didn't I'm like it? Big. No. I Crap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> At last, we managed to find somewhere in the dome where the children were enjoying themselves. Yeah. All right, so guys, what do you think of this place? This is pretty good, huh? Yeah! Okay. All right, this has been Jason Priestley for the 11 o'clock show at the Millennium Dome for the last time. Never again. <laughs> The seedy world of celebrity life is ripe with scandal this week, so who better to dish the dirt than Mr. UK Confidential? Please welcome our showbiz insider, Ali Ross. <laughs> Cheers, Ali. Thank you very much for coming along. Hi, nice yeah. to have you here again. Yes, Ali. So, Ali, what's the biggest piece of gossip doing the rounds at the moment? Mel C. Mel C doing... Mel C and Jay. From Five, well, of course. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, I'm a big fan of boys' bands. What, what? are they up to? <laughs> Nothing. And? Oh, well, there's two schools of thought. As, uh, the other school says they're going out with each other. Because that's, that's the official story, right? That's the official they're story. They're dating. According to their PR, they're at it like rabbits. <laughs> and their PR says, uh, you know it's true. Uh -huh. yeah. Dale Winton has admitted smoking dope this week, but that's not half as bad as some people's behaviour. So, naming no names, of mm. course, can you hint about any really depraved celebrity antics? Oh, I love this bit. <laughs> <laughs> you want me? Yeah, yeah well, come on. for it. Well, there was a singer who was popular in the 80s. Her husband would go to the toilet, mm. it would be put in the freezer, and she'd entertain herself with it later. <laughs> was, she, she, how, so he, basically, for anyone who's not quite yeah. got what he's saying, her husband would I, shit I know, I and put it in a freezer, and she'd do what with it? Oh, no, Play with no. It. <laughs> <laughs> Did That's what I'm told. OK, any, any other depraved celebrity acts? Um, there's the muscular action hero who can... He's He's, he, he's flexible. He's, he can gam himself off. <laughs> <laughs> he can actually do it. Yeah. Which really? technique does he use? And it's not very big either as well. So it's really <laughs> Is it the leaning forward or the legs over the head technique? <laughs> Which ones you go for? He really knows his stuff. We're going to end it there, I think. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, Ali Ross. Thank you. It's incredible. Look at it yourself. They say Paris is the city of romance, but whoever they are, they've clearly never made sweet love in the back of a transit van speeding through the Dartford Tunnel. That is romance. But is London <laughs> actually better than Paris? Well, with Letitia Castor, the new face of France, moving over here, it seems it is. But for an unbiased view, I went to London to find out. Did you? Mm. The French are in uproar today following the announcement that supermodel Letitia Castor, the face on the coins and stamps of France, is moving to London. But will Londoners welcome her with open arms or simply tell her to lance votre crochet? <laughs> I've come here to London to find out. How can we stop French asylum seekers like this, this model coming over here, buying our houses, drinking in our bars no, and posing semi-nude in our magazines? No, I wouldn't call her an, an asylum seeker in any sense. No, she's self-supporting. Mm. Well, I think her bra does quite a lot of the uh, yeah, she, she supporting be, there. She'd be welcome <laughs> to this country with open arms, one would think. Would you be at the airport with your arms open? Oh, yes, I would certainly to give her some measure of support if she doesn't have a bra. <laughs> Other French celebrities thinking of moving to London um, include the following. Now, tell us which of these French celebrities are okay to live in London and which should never move here. Um, Inspector Jacques Cousteau. Well, I wouldn't mind him coming. The bumbling underwater detective. That's right, yeah. um, Michel Barrymore. Barrymore, he's not French. Mm. You see? Mm. Barrymore. Right, should Barrymore, being a Frenchman, be allowed to move to London? Yes. The French are hoping to force us to use um, some of their language, some of their words in our, in our English language. So we'll be forced to say things like coq au van, le coq sportif and coq a hoop. Do we really want a language that relies so heavily on cheap cock gags? Oh, that's, actually, that was true, wasn't it? 
Oh, I don't know. Um, I suppose so. If they think it do us any good. I mean, would you want to? Would you want to go home and, and uh, eat a nice piece of cock for your dinner? <laughs> or do you? <laughs> no. Okay, it, it can be arranged if if you like. <laughs> what do you think of the French custom cock tickling? The French custom of cock tickling. Of cock tickling. I can demonstrate well, if you want. Well, this, this is the cock sportif. No, it's the, the cock um, the of co man. The cock of man. <laughs> this, yeah. Would you like to demonstrate what they do? Not to me. You would love it, wouldn't you? You'd love it if someone goes, uh, Monsieur, bonjour. Just chatting to you while you're at the post office. No, you think she's one of you, I'd say, not to divorce me instantly. Oh, really? And another thing that they think of, of using, you know, you know the long um, sticks of bread you get? Uh -huh. They're going to call it, now get this, they're going to call those baguettes. What? They call the long, big French sticks you get of bread, they call those baguettes. How do you feel about that? Fuck off, I'm not having none of that. No way, brother. So there we have it. While it appears that the vast majority of Londoners wouldn't welcome invasion of French supermodels, if they're desperate for somewhere to stay, they can always keep at mine. This has been Ian Lee, The 11 O'Clock Show, London. There are certain rights for which we'd all take to the streets and demonstrate. Freedom of speech, sexual equality... And the freedom to enter owls from behind. Is that, is that right? No. <laughs> On the anniversary of the death of Martin Luther King, Ricky Gervais examines the struggle for civil rights. It's because they died. Oh. In 1955, Rosa Parks, a black American, was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus. This event is thought by many to be the catalyst that sparked the civil rights movement. Black people were still discriminated against in all walks of life, and it seemed that in some countries, particularly South Africa, things would never change. Then, in 1982, two men, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, sang Ebony and Ivory, in which they expounded that if black and white can live together on the piano keyboard, I don't know why they saying piano, but the point they were making was that if different types of wood can be put next to each other, then racism is wrong. Did the trick. No, there's no more racism anywhere, ever. Power a song. Michael Jackson, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. I mean, he chose to be white, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not easy being green. Kermit's nephew, Robin, off the Muppets. He didn't know what he was talking about. I haven't thought this through. Sorry. <laughs> Strong letters heading his way. That's the end of part one. Still to come, original Brit babe Sam Fox. And straight after the break, classic clips of a 70s sex girl getting a huge wad shot in his face. You don't <laughs> want to miss it. <laughs> Nineteen eighty-four, and Marvin Gaye gets shot in the guts. Ouch! He heard a lot of things through the grapevine. Pity he didn't hear his dad was a nutcase with a 44. I've never understood that song. Grapes can't leave messages and sex can't heal. If it could, they'd have screwed him at the hospital. Years ago today, and this is the 11 o'clock show on Tuesday, April the 4th. Coming up, Sizzling Siren Sam Fox. But first, according to reports in today's papers, Frank Dobson has about as much chance of becoming London mayor as he has of discovering his arse contains a third of the world's gold. He's now seen as such an unappealing, doddering idiot that even Tony Blair's been told to stay away from him, which is a bit like telling Richard to keep away from Judy. And yesterday, the old captain unveiled his campaign slogan Frank and to the point, which had about as much impact as a left hook from Stephen Hawking. The fight to be mayor... <laughs> the fight to be mayor seems over, unless Dobbo can pull something out of the bag and quick. Well, Frank, we know you're watching. Here's your chance. Just follow this simple advice to get your campaign back on track. Appearance. At the moment, you look like Ken Livingstone's got you by the balls. We say, <laughs> get rid of that stuffy old beard and try and adopt what you think would be a more modern, youthful look. Cool, man! <laughs> Grab the headlines. Get your message across with a stunt that no one can ignore. For example, rub your winky on a beggar's shawl, and the Daily Mail will trumpet the news Dobson gets hard on asylum seekers. <laughs> Slogan Change it from Frank and to the point to something more snappy. How about I'd rather have a Frank? Or, let's be frank, London's a shithole. <laughs> and finally, remember, London's mayor should be viewed as an exciting figure. Make sure you're seen trying to get inside the kind of watering holes that rock stars are always in. <laughs>
And that was our advice for Dobson's mayoral campaign. Ian. What now? They say beauty is only skin deep, but are they right? Well, yes. Peel away the skin and you're left with a disgusting puddle of mucus and blood, and who would want to shag that? <laughs> but some of those with skin intact really are beautiful. So much so, they turn up to Miss Universe 2000. And who could we get to cover that event? A very special investigative journalist. Pretty woman, walking down the street. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Pretty woman. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but behind beauty, I smell a story. That's why I'm at the Miss Universe UK finals, to sniff around. What would you be if you didn't have your hair, your eyes and your teeth? What would I be if I didn't have what I have now? Yeah. A freak. Would I be a freak? Um, which contestant do you think is the most ugly? I can't say that. I don't look at people like that. Everybody's here for a reason because they've got... Because one of them's got a lazy eye. <laughs> what would you do to win? It is a cutthroat world, isn't it? It is it difficult. Is. We see um, the... I'd be myself. Um, girl on girl? Uh, no, I'd just be myself. I Not the whole with just fingers and thumbs. <laughs> um, would you do that? Yeah. How many judges will you have uh, uh, how many judges will you have? I'm not quite sure. I think it's about six, but I'm guessing. <laughs> What's your dream if you win? If my, my dream is actually to be the next James Bond girl. I'd love to be a James <laughs> Bond girl. No, seriously. No, it's true, yeah. I would not do that. That's a lot of you have to smile all the time, so your life depends on it, don't you? Yes, our life depends on it. We have to smile all the time. OK, can you just smile at the camera now for me? And if you keep smiling... If I was to let you imagine that two puppies had been hit by a truck, can you smile through that image? Excellent. Just keep smiling. So there you have it. Behind the smile are tears. You're right. You <laughs> Daisy, why don't you tell us about tonight's guest? Go on. She first revealed her talents aged sweet 16, then went from page three in the sun to number three in Germany with two huge pop hits. She's the breast of British, a girl who's just lovely, and now she's hitting the peak of her career. Please welcome Sam Fox. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Now, we've not seen you recently that much in England. Where have you been? Oh, um, I've been... Well, actually, I've been locked in a recording studio for the last eight months. Who the hell locked you in a studio, woman? Come Someone on. horrible, really horrible, and it's been so boring. And yeah. I just can't wait to finish the album so I can get out there and sock it to everyone, if you know what I mean. Now, you, so you're recording an album. What else are you doing at the moment? I'm writing my book, actually. My oh, really? biography, yeah. Is it uh, any steamy passages or a good twist at the end? Loads. No, no. Um, <laughs> they, they, it's, it's the truth, you know. Like any book should be, it's the truth. And, um, Apart from a work of fiction, of course, which <laughs> should predominantly be made up. <laughs> but we all love technology and the information superhighway here. We've got our own website. We've got a few questions that have been sent in for you. Let's have a quick look at the first one, if it will pop up. It's from RX2. Are you ever going to do the topless modelling uh, again? I gave up page three in 1986. It's a long time. I bet you were, oh, I get in cabs now and they say, oh, Sam, I've not seen page three lately. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, but I did about, was it four years ago, The Sun celebrated 25 years of The Sun, page three. And they paid me a vast amount of money to pose topless again. And I said, all right then. Just so this one. <laughs> is it true they rub ice cubes on page three girls' nipples to get them... Uh... Not you. Oh, I don't have no. to do that. No, but do they, do they sometimes... <laughs> do they, do they... Well, it depends if you're a horny bird or not, really, doesn't it? I don't, I don't need no ice cubes, to be honest. So you're horny... You, <laughs> to be careful, when you're having those pictures taken... I just taken, like a tweak. <laughs> Daisy, I think we should move on, because I'm about to come. Um, do you ever resent the fact that you're famous for your breasts? 
No, it's great. I'm a legend, it's brilliant. You said yourself just now, Sam Fox the legend. And I went, God, am I a legend? You're a legend. So that's the first time I just heard that, so I'm feeling really big headed at the moment. Oh, as well you? as big chested. What's <laughs> the... Oh, you're so funny. Bless you. What's the most annoying thing about having big knockers? There's got to be some downside to it. No, it's lovely. Beautiful. You'd love it. Mm. <laughs> Let's move on now. Uh, we've got another question from Space Monkey. In the sun on March the 18th, 1984, you looked like you were looking just at me, <laughs> right into my eyes. Were you? Were you actually looking at <laughs> Space Monkey? <laughs> actually sent in? Um, I was actually. Oh, yeah. really? Fantastic. You'll have a, a good one yeah, tonight. Yeah, I remember then. that day well. <laughs> Time. We've got time for one quick last question from one of your fans. Uh, oh Mrs. Beaverbrook, you are famous for singing the song Touch Me. Is the offer still open? <laughs> Beaverbrook? <laughs> um. <laughs> Is the offer open? Are, what, people, are you, you still inviting people to touch you whenever you get the chance? Touch me, touch me, I want to feel your body. Oh, Why are we going to there, It's Sam Fox. I'm about to go and touch her. Sam Fox. Touch, touch. Now it's time for some news, Justin. Changing rooms, Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen has spoken of his terror after a stalker threatened to beat him black and blue. It's awful, said Bowen. Those colours are so 80s. <laughs> Denise Van Alton says the sexiest spot in London is a multi-storey garage where she once had sex in a car. She was speaking at the launch of London's new park and ride scheme. <laughs> After David Seaman nearly died in a car crash, he's told how his life twice flashed before him, the second time in slow motion from a reverse angle. <laughs> the ultimate history of the Beatles to be written by Paul, George and Ringo with the help of a ghostwriter, or as he's better known, John Lennon. <laughs> the Archbishop of Canterbury wants Charles to marry Camilla in a full state wedding. It would be the first royal occasion to involve a horse-drawn horse. <laughs> That's true. And that was the news just in. That's about it for tonight's oh, show. Oh. Tomorrow night, Ultimate It Girl Tamara Beckwith is our guest. If you can drag yourself away from your SM chat page, email us with questions for her. And finally, there was confusion amongst Met police officers when they were asked to cut crime with the help of their local supergrass. <laughs> <laughs> this pictures some pot. Good, Good night. night. <laughs>